Alrighty, so we'll talk about the first time you download um, an HMI that you've pretty much pulled out of the box. So it will come <clears throat> with probably no firmware and uh, an IP address set to uh, all zeros. Now we'll have to go uh, scan the network to find uh, what devices are connected. Um, this does a MAC address scan, it's not an IP scan. It'll come back with uh, what devices are on the network that it can talk to. And if it has a name, uh, what that name is uh, and what IP address it is. Now I'm going to set my computer up to um, a fixed IP uh, and you can pick whatever you want. So now I have a fixed IP. I will uh, put the display on the same network. Standard subnet. I'm not using a router. So I'll assign that uh, uh, IP address. Now with Profinet, you also have to have um, a Profinet name. Uh, or lowercase uh, just give it a simple name and I will assign it you can flash the screen if you have multiple HMIs and you're not sure which one you're actually uh, connected to Although you can always check the MAC address, which is on a sticker uh, on the back of the device. Scan the network again. Make sure that it actually, you know, picked up the the settings that I wanted. Uh, because whatever you pick. That's the way uh, the PLC will refer to it, uh, and both items, name and IP, have to match. Um, I have another project that I wanted to download, uh, so it actually had a different IP and profi name, uh, so I use that same procedure to, to change it, so I, you can see I call it HMI underscore one, and IP address is ends in three instead of a hundred. So now that I've actually uh, confirmed the uh, what address is actually physically online, um, I want to confirm that that's what I set in the project. Uh, again, the name and the IP address have to be 100% match um, or you're uh, not going to be able to communicate to it uh, by the PLC. Uh, here I'm just going to go check the clicking on the Ethernet port itself and go and check and make sure that the uh, that the Ethernet address is uh, the same as what I see when I scan the network uh, and it is Now, you can set this stuff manually. Uh, I just let the project kind of pick this stuff, uh, but you can just uh, uncheck that and make everything uh, manual input if you want. Now, 
and I'm going to do a download. Uh, the first time you do the download, you've got to go out and find find the device uh, that you want to download to. Uh, this also makes sure that uh, you, you've picked the right uh, uh, type of device, the right part number, uh, the right communication protocols. So it does some additional checks, uh, not just the scan as the uh, network scan does. So there is found a device that's compatible to everything in your project. So it'll let you pick it and then do a load. Now, uh, cause I'm on a virtual machine, it needs to do, uh, add a, a local IP address and that's a, a VM uh, machine uh, issue. Uh, no problem it'll add it there it goes it's added it for me uh, and now we can proceed to download the uh, to the screen itself um, it'll also do that if your computer's on a different subnet although I like to keep on the same subnet as the uh, automation equipment uh, when I'm not using the virtual machine for sure Um, so, first time out of the box, it'll do a firmware download. Uh, it takes about five minutes. Uh, make sure you don't power cycle it or uh, unplug the Ethernet. 